Hi, my name is John Paul and I run the blog PaymentTor.com. In this video, we will continue our analysis of payment systems models. The focus will be on closed loops models. Open loop models were introduced in the previous video and I encourage you to watch it to easily understand what we are going to see in this one and connect the dots. In this video we will look at closed loop models and consider few examples to illustrate what they are. So what are closed loop models? The picture on the right shows us what they are like. A closed loop system is directly connected to end parties, the senders and receivers of funds. So there is no intermediary between the end users and the systems. End parties establish a direct connection to the payment systems. And it is not possible to join the payment systems as intermediary. This is one major difference between open and closed loop systems. In open loop systems, end parties access the payment system through intermediaries. In closed loop systems, the end parties have a business relationship with the payment system and transact directly with the payment system. Closed loop systems are centralized while open loop systems are decentralized. Since the closed loop system is controlled by one entity, decisions can be made and implemented much faster than in an open loop system. End parties are companies, merchants, individuals that join the system either as buyers or sellers of goods and services. Now let's consider an example. Examples of closed loop systems are American Express, PayPal and Bitcoin. Let's focus on the American Express payment systems. End parties, the merchants and consumers, join the system and transact directly with Amex. There is no intermediary in between. Amex issues cars to the consumers and processes the payments from the merchants as well. Consumers have car accounts with Amex but not bank accounts. In fact, Amex does not offer bank accounts in general. This is the case in France, for example. However, car holders and merchants are requested to provide their bank account numbers. Car holders must also sign a SEPA direct debit mandate. This is because at the end of the day, payments transfer funds between bank accounts. Since Amex does not hold them, they need to access them. Otherwise, impossible to debit and credit the funds. The next question now is, how does Amex access the end parties accounts? Well, simply by joining the open loop system to access clearing and settlement systems and all the banks connected to them. In the next slide we will see how this can be done. On the picture we see a simplified closed loop model with one consumer, the car holder, one merchant and the Amex payment system. That simplified model is also called the three corner model. As already said, Amex must access the open loop system. Otherwise, it cannot debit and credit the accounts of end parties. There are three possibilities for a closed loop system to do that. The first possibility is for the closed loop system to join the open loop system as an end party by becoming customer of a bank. It will then instruct its bank to debit the consumer accounts through direct debits orders and to credit the merchant accounts through direct credit orders. 
A second option, the closed loop system can join the open loop system as indirect participant. It means accessing the clearing systems through a direct participant, a major bank in general. In this case, closed loop system forwards direct debits and credit transfers instructions to the clearing system through that direct participant bank. And finally, as third option, a closed loop system can join the open loop system as a direct participant. This last option is seldom in practice. The first two possibilities are used by closed loop systems most of the time to participate in open loop system. Decisions to become indirect participants or customers of a bank depends largely on the volumes of transactions process, but also on the strategy of the closed loop system. A specificity of the Bitcoin system. In some countries, the Bitcoin system is customers of many banks. That's how it gets access to open loop systems. They cannot become indirect participants, at least not now, particularly in France. It's not possible right now. But let's see, maybe things may change later. A key takeaway from this presentation is that closed loop models do not operate autonomously. They must access open loop systems to debit and credit bank accounts of the end parties. This brings us to the end of this introduction to closed loop models. In the next video, we will go back to open loop models and speak about the four corner model. All the separable books present the four corner model, so I think it is worth taking a closer look into that. Where does the four corner model come from? And why is it so powerful to analyze payment systems and instruments? I finish this video with few resources you should check out if you really want to deepen the topics of payment systems. These are amazing books that I have read myself and that I think are worth reading if you want to learn more about payment systems. I have provided my affiliate links below this video. You can use them to purchase a copy of one of these books. Thanks in advance. Well, that's the end of this video. If you found it interesting and useful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. The next video will be about the four corner model. Go to the blog and subscribe to the newsletter to get the latest information about articles and video. Thanks again and see you soon.